Welcome back, viewers. This is our third segment, and in this segment, we'll talk about the details of the surah that we just went over in the previous segment. So this would need a lot of attention. So try to stay awake through this segment. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Before Bismillah, we said "Audo Billahi Min Ash-Shaytanir Rajim." Audo Billahi Min Ash-Shaytanir Rajim is not the ayat of the Quran. We recite this to take refuge. Why? Because the hukam of this is given. That when you have intentions of reading the Quran, take refuge with Allah from the shaitan. So for that we recite, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajim. Now the first ayah of the Quran is Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Now the real question is if Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim is the part of Surah Al Fatiha or it's an ayat by itself? So, according to some ulama, their opinion is that Surah Al Fatiha is separate from Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim. Bismillah is one ayat of the Quran, and then Surah Al Fatiha is a separate surah, and it has its own seven ayat. And according to some ulama, Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim is the part of Surah Al Fatiha. And the ulama who believe, majority of the ulama, they believe that Surah Al-Fatiha is separate from Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. According to them, Bismillah is the ayat of the Quran and it comes to separate one surah from another one. So when you recite one surah, you say bis one surah and then when you finish, you say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, then you start the next surah. And it comes in the beginning of every surah for the barakah. And after the surah, for the, as a separator from the different surah. So this is the purpose of Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. And this Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim has a lot of meanings. It has a lot of details. So let's go over the detailed translation of Bismillah. Ba means with. Isam means name. Allah means Allah. Ar-Rahman means the beneficent. Ar-Rahim means the most merciful. With. Name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful. What does it mean with the name of Allah? What do you do with the name of Allah? So, ulama say that the word that comes, it is understood as Abda'u Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, that I start with the name of Allah, Ar Rahmanir Rahim, who's Rahman and Rahim. Abda'u Bismillah. So, this is one meaning. And one meaning is Qul. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, as if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is the first address of Allah to the mankind. So Allah is teaching them the first lesson from Allah is you say Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, I start with the name of Allah who is Ar Rahman and who is Ar Rahim. So this is the lesson from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the mankind. Why would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give a lesson? What lesson is there in it? So the lesson is. Bismillah. When you say Bismillah, I start with the name of Allah. It starts to make you think, why do I start with the name of Allah? And then the answers come back to you in saying that Allah is the creator of the whole universe. Allah, Allah basically means the one, the, that divine being who is the creator of all the universe, who is the cause of every effect, who is the reason for every event that takes place. So Allah is the doer of everything. Even though it looks like the sun shines and the stars shine, but on behind the scenes, it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is the doer of everything. So when, you, when I eat the food, it is not the food that fills my hunger. It is Allah who fills my hunger. When I am thirsty, it is not the water that quenches my thir thirst. This is Allah who makes me satisfied. When I go to sleep, it's not the sleep that makes me comfortable. It is Allah that fills my sleep and makes my tiredness go away. And He, he is the one who, re who gives rest to my body. So behind everything, I learned that this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is the doer of all actions. So if Allah is the doer of all actions, it's the smart way to do the things would be that I should start with, within His name that He is the doer of everything. So Bismillah, this word Bismillah is the introduction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that since He is the doer of everything, so I should start in His name. 
The next question is, why does a why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim with the name of Allah? Why not Billah with Allah I start? Why don't you start with Allah? Why do you start with the name of Allah? So one reason is that in the time of Jahiliyyah, in the time of ignorance and darkness, before Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, people used to say Bismillah tu wa Uzza. They used to say the Mushrikeen and Kufar, they used to call upon Lat and Uzza. These were their major idols their major god they used to say we ask in the name of lat we ask in the name of uzza so the quran came with this uh, concept of tawhid and with the same words it said bismillah in the name of allah so this is uh, one reason another reason is this is the introduction to the man that when you introduce someone to someone how do you say this is my friend and his name is this this is my uh, this is my son and his name is this this is my daughter and his name is this so this is the first conversation from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the man so this is the first introduction bismillah that allah is the one who is the divine being who is worthy of all the worship his name is allah you are always wondered where you came from allah is the reason for your origin Allah is the reason of your birth. Allah is the reason for which you came to this world. So that's how your first question gets answered. Where, you, where did you even come from? What is your mabda? And then comes Ar-Rahman. Now that we have come, we have landed in this earth. Right? Ar-Rahman. Ar-Rahman means the one who has full of rahma, rahma, One who is full of mercy. So what is this mercy? What is the definition of Rahma? The definition of Rahma is that Allah favors the one who does not deserve any favor. Allah does the, to not to punish someone who deserves the punishment. So the Rahma means to favor the one who does not deserve. To not punish the one who deserves punishment. So this is the sifat. This is the quality of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He favors upon us when we don't even deserve the favor. And He does not punish us when we when we deserve the punishment and that's what we see in this world that sometimes we disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we don't see that the punish punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala coming to us right away sometimes you look at the inappropriate do you see that your eyesight would go bad right away you will lose your eyesight no sometimes you lie you hurt someone and you don't see that your power of speech taken away or sometimes you oppress and you do wrong towards others and you don't see that anything go, you're losing something on your behalf so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not punish you Allah does not punish you when you deserve punishment this is his rahmah and then he favors upon you when you don't deserve the favor we as a human being we get so many blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we don't even ask and we don't even deserve so this is the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which are countless upon us. So this is the definition of Rahmah. Ar-Rahman, the most merciful. So Rahman and Rahim, they both mean the same meaning. Rahman means the one who has the Rahmah. Rahim means the one who has the Rahmah. Rahman has five alphabets. Raha, Meem, Alif, Noon. Rahim has four alphabets. Raha, Ya, Meem. Four alphabets and five alphabet word. They both may have the meaning of Rahmah. And I just told you the definition of Rahmah. So Rahman has five alphabets, alphabets meaning that it has more Rahmah. The meaning of Rahmah is more in Rahman. And the meaning of Rahim, the Rahmah is less in the word Rahim. In other words, Rahman is the one who has a lot of Rahmah. That means the Rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this dunya. Because the Rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala includes the both Muslims and the Kuffar. The Rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is equal to a believer and a non-believer in this dunya. So Rahman is the sifat of Allah, it's the quality of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that works in this dunya. And then the sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after we die is Rahim. That His favors are only going to reach the ones who, are, who have lived an obedient life who have believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and whose actions and deeds have supported the beliefs that they believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in other words, Rahman is the sifat of Allah that could be seen in this world. You know that 
so many wrong things, so many oppressions, so, many, so much zulum and injustice takes place in this world, still the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not destroy anyone, right? Therefore Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Ar-Rahmanu ala al-Arsh istawa, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created His universe and the pinnacle of His universe, His universe is Arsh. There is nothing above the Arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ar-Rahmanu ala al-Arsh istawa, what is above the Arsh is the Rahman, Ar-Rahman. Ar-Rahman is above the Arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So all the judgments that are passed through the Arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are because of the Rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We benefit from the Rahmah from in days and our night. So, it all, so this answers the next question that we have is our Mi'ad. How we are supposed to live our life? Our, we are supposed to live our life according to the Sifat of Rahman. That we should be nice to everyone. Just like Allah is Rahman in this, in this world, we should also have the same sifat. And then the word is Rahim. Ar-Rahim is again mean the most merciful. And this is the Rahmah because of which Allah would put the Mu'mineen into the Jannah. And Allah would put the Kuffar and the Mushrikeen and the Munafiqeen into the Jahannam. This is also the Rahmah. Sometimes people say, how is it, how is it the mercy of Allah? It is the mercy of a mother that it would never punish his son, the disobedient son. He would never want his son to be burned. How would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala burn his own creator, creation, when he, is, he claims to be so much more merciful than the mother? What does it mean? Then, still, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls himself a Rahim after he puts his creation into the hellfire, when it's going to be... Uh, even so much stronger than the fire of the uh, fire of the dunya. So the answer to that is that it is also part of the rahma to give justice. If the mu'minin and the kuffar they are both treated the same way, how would you know that this is the justice? This is not justice, and not having the justice is oppression, and oppression is against the mercy of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. The mercy requires the kindness, and the kindness will require to have justice, and the justice requires the mu'minin and the hard workers to be rewarded, and the kuffar and the disobedience to be punished. So this is according to the raham. And the next question that why Allah would put uh, someone in the hell to uh, to be burned and not uh, and still call it a mercy? And we would not, as, and a mother would never want this, even though uh, she is she does not love as much as Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. To answer to that is, we as a human being, we are weak. We have a tender heart. Imam Ibn Al Jauzi, rahimahumullah Taala, says this type of this types of feelings are because of having a tender heart. Allah does not have a tender heart. It is our weakness that we have a tender heart. We feel. Uh, we feel the way that we feel because of our conditions of our heart, we are, we, are, we are weak. But on the other hand, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mercy. Being merciful is, is not, does not mean that He is supposed to be tender hearted. So <clears throat> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would punish them and this would be also uh, His mercy upon the kuffar that He would put them in the hellfire. So this is Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Again, this is the introduction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who He is. And he also further attracts the man by saying, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Even though he is the most powerful, even though he is the creator of everything, but you don't have to be scared of him. He is Ar-Rahman. He is the most merciful. He gives you even if you don't deserve it. And Ar-Rahim. And if you stay obedient to him, he is still going to reward you on the day of judgment even if you don't deserve it. That's why Rasulullah said, people would not deserve Jannah. Allah would put them into the Jannah because out of his own mercy. So it is going to be the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that people who are obedient to Allah, they would enter into the paradise. So this is how, so, so look at this conversation, with the first conversation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how much attractive it is, how much it is attractive for the man to connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that you know that your Lord is the doer of everything. He is the cause under all the effects. He is the reason behind every event. But still he is so Rahman and Rahim. So now you are attracted. The man is attracted to, the, to his Rabb, to his Creator. Now he doesn't know what to do next. So how do, I, how do I return to the mercy? How do I love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala back when He has shown me that much love? When, I, when He has shown me that much mercy, how do I be grateful to Him? If He has shown me 
that he is the creator of everything. What is his haq? How do I fulfill his rights? So the answer of that is given in Surah Al-Fatiha that if you want to fulfill the rights of Allah, if you have to uh, pay the thanks, the, if you have to be thankful to Allah for his mercy and generosity, then the answer is here in Surah Al-Fatiha. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Maliki Yawmiddin, Iyaka Na'budu wa Iyaka Nasta'een, Ihdina Sirat Al-Mustaqeem, Sirat Al-Ladheena Anamta Alayhim, Ghayr Al-Maghdubi Alayhim Wa Al-Dhaleen. This is a very beautiful, con beautiful conversation from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. First thing first, since this is the first surah of the Quran, when you open the Quran, this is the first surah that you see. The name of this surah is Fatihatul Kitab. Fatihatul Kitab. This means the opening of the book. And again, this is the first surah that was completely revealed. And the Quran starts with this surah. This, the, another name for this surah is Ummul Kitab. Ummul Kitab means the source of the book. This is the source of the book. This is the summary of the rest of the book. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, There is no such surah as Surah Al-Fatiha in any of the previous scriptures. Neither in the Torah, neither, neither in the Injil, neither in any other Sahif. And no other surah is equivalent to the surah of Surah Al-Fatiha even in the Quran. So it is a very unique surah. And it is the summary of the rest of the Quran. Since it is the summary and the source of the rest of the Quran, one of the names of the Surah Al-Fatiha is Ummul, Ummul Quran. Another, another name of the Surah is Surah Al-Shifa. Surah Al-Shifa means the Surah that provides cure. It provides the physical cure and it also provides the spiritual cure. If you have a physical sickness or you have a spiritual sickness the surah al-fatiha is enough to cure any kinds of diseases this is how much how well it protects you against the shaitan another name of the surah is surah al-sual surah al-sual it why because it teaches you how, how to make a sual how to make a question how you ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so this surah has many benefits so we'll go in detail about this surah